Look at verse 7. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. Now, even though it's not mentioned here, do you, do you realize who's covering these sins? It's God. God is covering these sins. God is forgiving these lawless deeds. Verse 8, Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. To be honest with you, if that text was left by itself, it would say a lot of terrible things about God. What do you think about a judge who covers evil deeds? Pretends they didn't happen. Looks the other way. Is that the kind of God you want ruling the universe? But David says that's the kind of God he had. If you just look at that verse by itself, that doesn't look like a very holy God. That doesn't look like a very righteous Creator and Judge. So how can we have the part of the Scriptures testifying to the fact that God is righteous and He will punish every sin? And then over here, blessed is the man whose sins are covered by God. That it is an abomination to justify the wicked. And then in another part of the Bible, the wicked rejoice because they've been justified by God. This is the context of the Gospel. This is the divine dilemma. And how is the problem solved? How can we bring these two things together and prove that it is, there is unity within the person of God Himself, that there is unity within the Scriptures? I mean, what, what brings this all together? The Gospel of Jesus Christ.